Welcome back to Bean Garage. We are going to do a teardown of this 13S 1P lithium ion battery pack. Usually this would be the other way around. I would show you how to build it, but I already built this one and I'm going to show you how I built it by taking it apart a little bit and show you some of the components and where I got them from. So let's get to it. So everything here either came from Amazon uh, for all of the individual components or the cells themselves came from batteryclearinghouse.com. Let me show you this. So this is a fully charged pack. We're at 54.56 volts, which is just below 4.2 volts a cell. I'm going to disconnect that so I don't shock myself. So what we've got in this pack is a set of 13 cells and it's these SPIM 08HP cells all connected in serial. There is nothing in parallel. So this is an 8 amp hour pack uh, with 13 in series so that makes a 48 volt nominal and a was it 54.6 volt max. So when it's all charged up this is 54.6 volts. Now I did put a BMS in here. So this is a 13 cell 50 amp max BMS. So this allows me to connect my um, my load wires. So for what I'm gonna, whatever I'm going to be using this battery in directly up to the BMS. If the load tries to pull more than 50 amps, this BMS will actually cut out and prevent you from doing that. This BMS will also uh, do temperature readings when charging to make sure that you don't blow your pack up by charging it too quickly. And it will monitor individual cells for voltage when you're charging and um, use resistors to balance charge the pack. So having that BMS actually built into the battery pack, I. I I would not do it any other way personally. I am no expert in this, but I would rather have the BMS just on the pack itself. This BMS was like $16 or $17 off of Amazon, and I've got a link for that down below if you want to go check that out. Now, I'll show you in a minute um, something on that BMS that I did not like terribly, but it still worked out. Now, why do I have two leads here? So this longer one that should be labeled, but it's not, I just know because it's the longer one, is for the load. So if I plugged it in my e-bike, or in my case, my uh, cordless lawnmower, that's where I'd plug that into. That has the, the 50 amp limit on it. And then this here is the charging port. Um, and I just went ahead and used the same connector because that's what I had. And I'll, um, I can show you, the, that's, I grabbed that off of Amazon as well. Um, a whole set of silicone wire with XT60 connectors, actually all very nice. Um, went together nicely, gave me enough wire to get everything connected, and I've got plenty left over. And I had some nice heat shrink to get all these connectors covered up. So let me show you how I put this thing together. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this Kapton tape, which is a high resistance, high, um, can handle the heat, right? So great for using to put batteries together and uh, a little bit expensive, which it only hurts me a little bit cutting through this tape. I'll have to put it back on later. So we're gonna go ahead and do this for the sake of you so you can see how I put these together. All right, so you'll notice that I had some cardboard in here. And yes, this is just cardboard um, to kind of space out between the individual connections. Because as you see here, there are, where each of these cells comes over, I've got them bolted together. Show you how it's bolted together here. Just using some uh, M6 by 8 millimeter long bolts, some washers, and uh, just some lock nuts. I'm not really sure the lock nuts are required, but I went ahead and did that. So the cardboard and the capped on tape and everything is to keep these from flexing and touching each other. Um, I didn't trust just the tape. I've had it short through the tape. So I just needed to keep some distance between the connectors. Now you also see over on this side that there is a um, small wire here connected to this terminal. Every place that I bolted together the batteries, I ran a wire back to the BMS. And I will show you that now. And this is just repeated all the way down, right? So if you started with a um, positive lead, way down here at the bottom left, I think is where my positive lead was, and then it goes to negative, and then to the next battery is positive and negative, 
all the way down, just like you would do with any series battery pack. Um, so that is explanatory enough. Now let me show you the BMS here. Well, I'm gonna end up ripping that BMS labeling right off. I don't wanna do that. Um, got myself in a pickle here. Right, so just to kind of show off the f features of the BMS itself, we've got a 13S battery pack. So we'll have 14 wires here. Uh, and that's for the main negative, the main positive, and then every connection in between. Now typically you would have something that plugged into this connector here. You'll notice that nothing is actually plugged in there. It is empty indeed. All of my wires, which by the way, this was just a Cat5 or Cat5e wire that I used. It actually turned out really nicely. It solders really well. It was just a, a solid copper or a um, copper clad aluminum. It soldered really well to the back of this BMS. And that's because this BMS was apparently so cheap that nobody knows what kind of connector this is and it does not come with a pigtail. So I asked the company, they said they're gonna get back to me. If they ever do, I'll put it down in the comments and, and pin that comment if they decide to get back to me on what kind of connector that is. But for now, I figured, whatever, I'll just solder to the back. This, this BMS is going to stay with this battery pack regardless. So I'll just do it that way. So all these wires are just soldered to the back of the BMS, no big deal. This is your um, temperature sensor for the BMS. So that would ideally be taped down to a battery cell. So you've got this, which is the main negative lead that goes to the main negative battery end, right? So this is where um, the first uh, tab starts for negative. And then on the far opposite end, down here is where the positive is. And you, know, you can see because my positive wires go down there. So when you're wiring this up, you've got your connectors for charging and discharging. The positives just go straight to the positive of the battery. Whereas the negatives for me, since I wanted to utilize that, um, obviously the charging, right? You need to run the charging through the BMS for it to be able to control that. And then for the discharge as well, I ran that through the BMS and that's limited at the 50 amps. So this is the negative running through the BMS and out to my charging and my discharge port. Now you're probably asking yourself, you put this whole battery together, how much did it cost and is it any good? So this is about 380 watt hours. If you have an eight amp hour battery at 48 volts, so around 380 watt hours, I dropped this into a cordless lawnmower and I've got another video on that. And I mowed just over 10,000 square foot worth of yard using this 380 watt hour pack. Now, I didn't ever own that lawnmower when it had the lead acid batteries in it. The lead acid batteries that I pulled out of it that were toast, they had melted, they were rated for somewhere around 400 watt hours. So this was just below that. And running these down to the cutoff voltage of, I believe it was three volts is where the BMS cuts it off at. I got over 10,000 square foot worth of yard mode. With the original lawnmower, I believe they advertised a quarter acre is what they advertised, which is about 11,000 square foot or so. So right on par with what they advertised, uh, which I figure is, is probably a pretty good indicator. I tested these cells individually and at a 1.5 amp hour discharge rate, which is well below 1C, because 1C would be eight amp hour discharge rate. Um, they would get eight to nine amp hours. Um, and I did some other videos if you want to check those out at like a two and a half C to three C. And you can see what kind of performance I got out of these at a higher discharge rate, which would be more indicative of what I got in the lawnmower. I ran that lawnmower at, it was running about 15 to 18 amps. Typically it would peak when you hit something um, that needed a lot more uh, power to, to get through that, that wet grass. It, uh, it worked really well. Um, some of the plans I've got for a battery like this, I wanna make a little three cell pack for my kids' power wheels. I know that's been done with a lot of like drill batteries and other kinds of um, lithium ion, lithium polymer type batteries. So I wanna do one of those. I'll get a, I'm gonna buy a BMS for that because um, I just, I feel safer actually having a BMS in the mix on the actual device because a lot of people run like a, a buzzer or something, which gets a lot of RC cars have. So you're running your RC car around, voltage gets too low, the buzzer goes off and you say, okay, cool, I need to stop. What if you don't? 
what if you're someone else is mowing with your mower for whatever reason and, and you've got a lithium ion pack in there you want something that just goes ahead and stops it i'd rather have the safety built in that is the breakdown of my 13s which is 13 in series one in parallel battery pack. You guys tell me what you think. Have you built something with some of these uh, SPIM 08 cells? How did they turn out for you? What kind of um, load did you put them under? Or maybe you've got some other battery that you think is better. These batteries right now are going for like two and a half dollars a pop. I say batteries, the cells. So each 29 watt hour cell is going for about two and a half dollars a piece. So they seem pretty inexpensive and I can got buy the uh, the, the M6 bolts and stuff were pretty cheap. So I'm, I'm planning to play around with these and see how well they work. And I'm curious what you guys think about them. Just kidding, I was gonna tell you how much this cost. So I told you the cells are about two and a half bucks a piece. You got 32 and a half dollars worth of cells. We've got washers, bolts, nuts, my connectors, wires, and um, heat shrink, my BMS, my Kapton tape. If you add all that up, and we paid for all the supplies, which is more than you need for just this battery pack, right? Comes up to about 99, 87. And yes, I realize that Amazon prices tend to fluctuate and that number is gonna change. If you just look at the itemized prices, so like if I bought 50 bolts for 10.99, I only used like 25 of them. Um, and we itemize this out, it comes out to 68.29. This is, this is a pretty good number for dollars per kilowatt hour. If you look at like a, a Tesla, you end up somewhere around $225 uh, per kilowatt hour. And with this number here, you're going to end up at $179 per kilowatt hour, which is certainly less than what you get with the Tesla. And the Tesla is not ready yet. You get a Tesla module that's 5.2 kilowatt hours and you still gotta throw a BMS on there. You still gotta put connectors on it. So there you have it. It's a pretty inexpensive battery to get. You can buy just the number of cells you need. Go grab a BMS that fits your application and build yourself a custom battery.